Everyone, it is July week five. We have some new features to show off from the community team. Let's get started. First up, we have Devin. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm here to show off a feature today uh, that we're calling uh, Table Publisher. Uh, and the whole idea behind Table Publisher is to provide an interface to go from uh, tables that you might already have or you might create from objects and turn them, uh, pass them into blank tables. Uh, so that's uh, what I'll be demonstrating today. Uh, this is really the meat of it right here. Um, you call Table Publisher, uh, you give it a name, and then you give it a, a table definition. And I'll go over this table definition a little bit more. Uh, but what you get back is a blank table and then a way to publish data into that blank table. So let me step back here a second and explain this demo a little bit more. Uh, we've got a simple Coinbase WebSocket feed here. Uh, and the reason why I like to use this as a demo is because it's very simple, uh, about 40 lines of code. And uh, I am using async IO, um, one, because table publishing works really well with um, asynchronous logic. Um, and two, it makes it look nice and pretty. So we'll basically ignore all this, except to say that we're subscribing to Coinbase matches and we're getting these uh, data classes back. Uh, so on the Deep Haven side, what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to take those matches in a list format and turn them into a static table here. Uh, there's a little bit of parsing that needs to go on to change the JSON types into uh, primitive types. Um, and then we come through here again and we create uh, this table publisher. And there's a little bit of setup we do around on done notifications and handling it. Um, but here's kind of where the magic happens. We get a call back here with a match and then we do a publisher.add. Um, there's a lot of room for improvement in this demo, um, such as batching up these matches, um, but this works for now. And then we throw it to an async IO runner uh, and start it up. So that's that's all the setup. And let me go ahead and run all of it first. So there's the WebSocket code. Here's the matches to table code. And then we'll go ahead and actually execute some stuff. Um, so we'll execute these first few lines here. And you'll notice we are getting some blank tables back. So if you're not familiar with blank tables, uh, they're a very cool concept where you get the chance to consume all the data uh, in one update graph uh, cycle, and then it disappears. Um, of course, we have downstream primitives uh, that um, make that data more useful, such as you can turn it into a ring table. So let's capture a ring table here of the last 10 items, um, or you can turn it into an append-only table. Uh, so there is an append-only table of T2. Um, and then based off of what I did earlier, we can go ahead and stop these tables if we want. So we can call T1 done here, which is just a handler to, um, to stop the public publication in this, but T2 is still going here. Uh, so this is part of the 0.27.0 release, and it's going to be a really great way to get data into Deep Haven uh, quickly and efficiently. Very cool. Uh, Ryan, do we have a demo from you today? Absolutely, just one second, my screen share going. So, all right, so I am, um, I'm demonstrating somebody else's work in this case, just because they're unavailable. And uh, bear with me, this is not really a very exciting demo, but it shows that we can do this, right? Do you so, mind just hitting one level zoom on that? Absolutely, I've already gone a few more, I'll just keep going. How about that? Thank you. All right, terrific. So let's just start with a couple imports. Uh, this is a groovy example, because that's kind of where I live most of the time. I'm just taking a random a CSV file of crypto trades from one of our example repositories. Uh, here you can see what they look like raw. So basically we've got instrument, exchange, price, and size. So we've got you know a couple of different crypto securities trading on a couple of different exchanges with um, um, you know their their prices and size relative, right? So what I can what I can do with that is, so for example, like I can do kind of a, a basic aggregation. So take a look at this. We're just gonna Partition by exchange. So we're now going to have, um, actually, if you want to look at what that looks like, we could just do uh, a quick uh, move by exchange dot merge. All right. So this now you can just see nothing exciting here. Just I've just basically partitioned all these things. And so the data is now grouped as you look at it here. Uh, and then we could do an aggregation. Just let's take the sums of the price and the um, size 
and we'll include the exchange just as an ad first to kind of pass it through. Uh, a group, you know, obviously aggregated on the instrument, right? So now I can just run that guy and let's uh, let's do that same merge trick on that just so you can see what we're talking about. Uh, and so now you see that we've got relatively few rows, but we have the sum of the prices um, on Binance for all F, um, on Binance for all Bitcoin, and so on and so forth, right? So different exchanges have different sets of securities. You see that Bitcoin does not trade on Poloniex, at least not in the data set that we have here. And um, that is kind of key for what some of the outputs you're going to see. Uh, then we're going to, in this case, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a, tr a contrived example, but I'm, I'm basically just taking each exchange that we find in that partition tables key column, right? Uh, I am getting the input table from the partition table for that. I'm cleaning up the exchange so that it can be part, a component of a valid column name because we don't like dashes in column names because they're not valid Java identifiers. And I'm building my multi-joint inputs. There is a cleaner way to do this, but there, there's a small bug in string parsing right now. So this is sort of the, the fully written out Java E version of that. Um, so let's just you know gather our inputs. That. Nothing exciting to see there, but you can see the list of exchanges that we're expecting here. And you can see that we're expecting to have uh, how many different input tables? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so if we say print line MJIs, I don't know how else those two string, but yeah, there are inputs, right? Um, but then we can just do our multi join and grab the table out of it. Um, you'll note the API is a little bit different than. You might expect for kind of an enterprise operations because we've added a multi-join table wrapper in light of plans down the road to start adding the capability to add new joins to an existing multi-join, right? So you have to call them to do the multi-join and then take the table out of it. So here's our result table. Let's make it a little bigger so you can really kind of see what we're looking at here. And so you'll notice that in this particular case, we're just basically joining on the sum of the prices and the sum of the sizes for each instrument for each exchange, right? So we have a, a, a per exchange input table, right? Um, the set of instruments would be all the ones that appear anywhere in our, across all of our input tables. So it's basically a select distinct of all those different instruments. And again, we just joined on the right column. So if you notice here, so the FUSD for Binance, we can go over here, look at our merged aggregation, FUSD for Binance, Look at, look at that same values, right? And same, same thing for the size and same thing for the price, as you can see over here in this other column. Um, and again, that's just a presentation that lets you stack kind of horizontally instead of vertically all these different values. So you could see, you know, hey, uh, you know, from this, you could easily derive something like, hey, what's, what's the, the relative volume on these different exchanges as, uh, with an update statement, right? So I could see that, for example, Binance is doing much more work in F than Coinbase. Um, Far, far more than Bitstamp, far, far uh, more than Gemini, right? And so Coinbase is about three, ten x Gemini, Binance is about two and a half x Coinbase, and so on and so forth, right? So we can easily derive that with an update or an update view at this point. Um, the cool thing, of course, about this is just like it, it, it feels a lot like a kind of a multi-column natural join on top of a select distinct. But you can any kind, any scenario where you'd like to get to sort of a a nice wide historical presentation where you've got all your columns for all your inputs. This is your tool for it, right? And it should be vastly more efficient than a traditional natural join because we could reuse the hash table in a lot of cases. So lower data, uh, lower data structure overhead, uh, and lower startup costs. I would expect relative to serial natural joins. Uh, down the road, we'd like to actually add support for, um, as I was mentioning before, adding on new tables after you create this, which would make it a great backend for a pivot table experience. Uh, and that's all I have to add for this. Thanks to Larry for the work porting this from Enterprise uh, and making significant adjustments to make this capable of using the, our, our open address hash tables internally uh, and just generally cleaning up and, and adding the sort of forward looking in, uh, interface. Thanks to our Enterprise friends, Andy and Charles for getting the original version out. Um, that's all I have for today. Thanks. Thank you. That's it for this week. Bye everyone.